Today, we're going to discuss problem solving involving factors of polynomials. But before that, let's have a short review about the different types of factoring. So, in factoring, we have to remember that the first thing we need to find is if the given has a greatest common monomial factor. After that, we're going to check the number of terms. We have three number of terms. We have the two terms, three terms, and four or more terms. If the given is two terms, so we can solve it by difference of two squares or by the sum or difference of two cubes. Well, if the given has three terms, we can use perfect square of trinomial or using the different methods in non-perfect square of trinomial. So here we have the uh, slide divide and bottoms up. We have the trial and error, the easy method. And last, for four or more terms, we have factoring by grouping. Next, so in this uh, video tutorial, we're going to discuss how to solve problems with spotting errors. So let's have an example number one. Your classmate asserted that x squared minus 4x minus 12 and 12x minus 4x minus x squared has the same factors. Is your classmate correct? Prove by showing your solution. So if we're going to look at the given, so the first term and the last terms are being swapped. So we're going to see if they have the same factors. So for solution of x squared minus 4x minus 12, so the answer is x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 6. While the solution for 12x minus 4x minus x squared, we have 6 plus x times the quantity of 2 minus x. If you're going to see, the whole numbers are also swapped in places. The signs are not the same, too. Here we have x plus 2, and here we have 2 minus x. x minus 6, and the other one is 6 plus x. So we can say that these two given has or do not have the same factors. Next, number 2. Your friend factor x squared plus 36 using the difference of two squares. How will you make him realize that his answer is not correct? So, if we're going to recall, uh, difference of two squares has four characteristics. So, we have that the given must be two terms. So, here the given is two terms. Next is the two terms must be a perfect squares. So, 36 has a per is a perfect square. And the exponent must be an even number. Here, the exponent of x is 2, which is an even number. And the last thing you will see is the sign between the two terms. It must be minus sign. So here in this example, uh, one condition is not uh, achieved, which is the um, sign between the two terms, which is plus. So we can say to your friend that the sign between the two terms of difference of two squares must be a minus sign to be able to factor it. So this one cannot be factored using difference of two squares. Next, number three. Can the difference of two squares be applied to 3x squared minus 12? If yes, how? If no, why? So let's see if we can uh, factor 3x squared minus 12 using the difference of two squares. So if we are going to recall, in our uh, second slide, I show you the different factoring and the steps on how to factor. So the first is we're going to look if the given has a common difference or greatest common factor. So 3x squared minus 12. So we're going to see 3 and 12 has a common factor. So their common factor is 3. So divide 
each term of the polynomial by the GCMF, which is 3, so 3x squared divided by 3, we have x squared, and then negative 12 divided by 3, we're going to have negative 4. So we just solve first the given using the GCMF. Now, take a look. We have here x squared minus 4. So, this is a two term, or it has two terms. And then 4 is a perfect square. The uh, exponent is even. And the sign between the two terms is minus. Meaning, we can solve this by difference of two squares. So, bring down 3, then solve this using difference of two squares. So, divide the exponent by 2. That will be x. And then 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So, we have your x plus 2 and the other one is x minus 2. In here, we have solved this using the DTS or the difference of 2 squares. So, meaning, we can apply difference of 2 squares in this given 3x squared minus 12. But, we're going first to get the GCMF to extract the difference of 2 squares. Next, number 4. If the area of a frame is 4a squared minus 12a plus 9 square units, is it possible to solve each side? If yes, show your solution. So, let's see. Here, we have 3 terms. So, again, uh, let's see if this Three terms has a greatest common factor. So we have 4, 12, and 9. So if we're going to think it has no greatest common factor, we have here variables a squared and then a, but in the last term, it has no variable. So it has three terms. We cannot solve by GCMF, but this is three terms. So... The choices is perfect square trinomial or a non-perfect square trinomial. Let's see if it is a perfect square trinomial. So, 4a squared is a perfect square. And 9 is also perfect square. So, uh, the first term and the last term are both positive. Now, let's check by getting the square root of the first term and the last term. And then multiplying the square root by twice. So, the square root of 4a squared is 2a, and the square root of 9 is 3. So, if we're going to check 2a times 3, that is 6a. So, we're going to double it times 2. The answer is 12a. So, meaning this is a perfect square trinomial, and the factor is 2a minus 3 quantity square. That is using the perfect square trinomial. Last is, is x to the fourth minus 1 equals the quantity of x squared plus 1 times the quantity of x squared minus 1 completely factored. So we're going to look if x squared minus 1, this is the final answer. So this is solved using DTS or the difference of two squares because one is a perfect square, four is an even number, and the sign between the two terms is minus. So the square root of x to the fourth power is 2x squared because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have your x squared, x squared, then plus and minus, and then the square root of 1 is 1. x squared plus 1 cannot be factor, cannot factor anymore because the sign between the two terms is plus. So, we're just going to bring it down. Let's see if x squared minus 1 can be factor. So, 1 is still a perfect square. 2 is an even number and the sign between the two terms is minus. So, meaning, we can still factor it by getting the square root of x squared, which is x, and the square root of 1, which is 1. So, we have x plus 1, and the other one is x minus 1. So, this is the final answer. So, this given is not completely factored. But this is the complete factor. So that's it.